What are the links between neuroscience and education? For experts like American neurologist Judy Willis, they are self-evident. But for others like Dorothy Bishop, a professor of developmental neuropsychology, it's too early to make the link. Um, there is a big movement trying to integrate neuroscience and education. Um, but I, I'm dubious as to whether there are any real applications as yet. I think it's too early days to really start implementing neuroscience in the classroom. We're finding out a lot from neuroscience about children and brains and how children's brains develop. But it's hard, I, I find it hard to see how you would take that straight to uh, educational practice. Neuroscience is going to save, is already saving billions of dollars with regarding education. There have been so many neuro myths. Until we had the neuroscience to investigate, people were spending money on thing exercises so they could exercise their right brain, exercise their left brain. With neuroimaging, that is such, un, such an untruth that neuroscience is saving education money. It's providing a right now picture of what's happening in the brain. We could use that to test any theory or intervention. We would do better to look at cognitive psychology, which could change. For example, you know, if you think about learning to read, we know from cognitive neuropsychology uh, studies of the reading process that although many people think of reading as a visual process, it involves a lot of analysis of sounds in language. And that has led to the development of educational methods for teaching children to read that involve a focus on the sounds in words um, rather than worrying about whether they get their letters the wrong way around. When teachers find out that genius is not in the genes, that everyone's background doesn't mean it has to be that way in the future, they have renewed energy and effort toward the student. to getting that more responsive teacher, they respond with more effort. It's going to, it, it is game changing. The letters I get from teachers tell me how much more successful and how much happier they are in the classroom when they know how the brain works. But The Bridge Too Far was actually the title of a paper that was written about 20 years ago by a man called John Brewer in the States, who, who's a very eminent uh, person in this field, who, who made exactly that point and said he felt we were trying to go straight from neuroscience to education, and what we needed in the middle was cognitive psychology. And I think he said it 20 years ago, but it needs saying again. When there's communication among the people involved, that's when we'll have the most efficient and best research evaluation tools. And think about this one. Teachers who already know what works can tell the scientists, hey, why don't you test this? Because I sure know that it works. That will be an enduring bridge. And there'll be three branches to that bridge. The cognitive neuropsychology, cognitive psychology, neuroscience, and the educators. <laughs>